Hello. Today we're going to talk about premenstrual workup in a patient with native aortic stenosis or TAVR that might potentially be high risk for coronary obstruction. So here I already completed the workup that I previously shown in a different video. And you can see on the bottom left panel, I drawn out a few structures. Number one, you can see the left main here, the height is around 10.1 millimeters. You can also see that the left sinus height is around 16.6 .6 millimeters. You also see that on this view facing the left main, that there is a very tall left coronary cusp. Now in situations where the leaflet tip is bulky or calcified, um, there's certainly a risk of coronary obstruction because if you see here, let me just go up and show you some of the dimensions here. So if I go to the sinus tubular junction, you can see that the average diameter is on 23.6 millimeters and I superimpose a 23 millimeter circle. So you can see that, that there's not a lot of room here and you can, then go to the sinus dorsava, which in this case, there is a lot of sinuses. The sinuses are large, 31 millimeters facing the left sinus and 28.9 facing the right coronary sinus. Now let's take a look at the uh, annular dimension. You can see that here, the area is around 454 millimeters square and the perimeter is around 77 millimeters. So certainly, from a valve sizing standpoint, if it's a balloon expandable valve, you would consider a either 23 millimeters and add volume or 26 millimeters and perhaps subtract volume because if you see the mean diameter here, it's ranging between 24 millimeters to around 24.5 millimeters. So I think a 26 millimeter balloon expandable valve here would might be a little too oversized because you can see that, remember the standard tubular junction is only 23.6 millimeters. And you can also see if I go up on the aortic root, there's this chunk of annular calcium here at the base. So this is where potentially aortic root injury may occur if you oversize excessively, and especially in a patient with risk factors for root injury, such as immunocompromised or very advanced age. At the same time, the issue here also with this bulky left cusp, you can see on the bottom left panel that with this configuration of the aortic root with small sinus tubular junction, you may risk coronary obstruction here with the left main. Even though your sinus here is quite generous, we just cannot predict whether this tall leaflet will be swinging out like a door and potentially obstruct the left main, or it might just get pushed sideways and you may be lucky and get away with it. And of course, coronary obstruction risk now in Tavar is extremely low, but certainly the outcome can be catastrophic uh, if you, it does happen. So at least in our ex experience in our program, we tend to be very conservative and protect the left main at least with a coronary wire, it's not a stent to be able to rescue in case it does happen. The other thing to keep in mind is that we depends also on the valve implant height. So here I drew out a box of a 23 uh, balloon expandable valve. Uh, if you argue that if you go to do a 26 millimeter valve, let's try that here. I'm gonna extend this to now to a 26 millimeter box. So remember 80, 20, if you do uh, that to implantation depth, you're gonna be 60 millimeters above the annulus. So we'll do that. We'll expand this more and then you're gonna make this into a 26 millimeter box the inflow. So now here you go, you have your 26 millimeter normally expanded balloon expandable valve in this anatomy. So you can imagine now this will completely seal off the aortic root. And if you have a situation where your left main uh, that is obstructed or compromised flow from the bulky left cusp, it's gonna be very difficult to wire the left main after the valve has been deployed. This is remember an 80, 20 implant. Most people prefer to try to do a higher implant of course, with this particular root anatomy of a smaller STJ, the balloon might actually push the valve more ventricular you know, with a little bit deeper implant than expected. So that's why we, at least in our center, prefer to overexpand or at least overbuild the 23 balloon expandable valve 
so that number one is easier to protect the left vein. Number two, we have already published a pa two papers, one in Jack intervention and one in uh, CCI on this topic of overfilling the balloon of a balloon expandable valve to be able to seal against annular area that are a little bit more undersized than the IFU. And we have excellent outcomes with no worse paravalve leak or transvalve leak. And the gradient will also no, uh, not different significantly. So I'm going to go back to a 23 millimeter box. Now here also, if you want to look at the root anatomy, you can make it into a 26 millimeter circle as well on the top left panel. Let's say that I want to see what the corner obstruction rate looks like in a 26 millimeter valve. And now you can also pan across the aortic root. You can see that here, if it's a 26 millimeter valve, even with uh, making taking one CCL, you can imagine this chunk of calcium will be potential risk of root injury. And so you can see here how you may size this valve accordingly. And you can see how that might fit relative to the aortic root sinuses in terms of coronary obstruction risk. Now, of course, you can also consider using a self-expanding valve here, given this anatomy uh, to potentially avoid coronary obstruction because for example, the uh, Evolute platform has a waist of a 23 millimeter, so that might mitigate you against uh, going all the way against the left main orifice. And of course, other self-expanding valve as well is low profile of a waist, and you might be able to avoid coronary obstruction. But if you're going to use a balloon expandable valve, you definitely want to potentially uh, wire this just in case it can happen. So how do I measure this uh, left cut, people ask. So first, I actually go down to the annular plane. And here you go into the double oblique MPR view. So, so this is a true non-center line representation of the annular plane. And you can see now the root anatomy. So I'm going to zoom in now to show you how they measure it. So I can right click here and go to measurements and I can use the distance tool to draw a straight line from the tip all the way to the base. Now, in this case, you can see the leaflet is straight in this uh, particular part of the cardiac cycle, which is in systole. And you can see that the left cusp length is 15.6 millimeters. Now I can also draw the left main height, which you saw was around 10.1 millimeters. So here is pretty similar, it's around 8.7, so a bit lower on this view because it's not a stretch line. And I can also measure the left sinus height, which is on 15.5. So here is an important observation. If you can imagine, if you put an oversized balloon expandable valve here, or if you have a self-expanding valve that the waist expands quite close to the left main, even with the generous sinuses, if this left cusp swings like a door in this manner, it's gonna match the sinus height. And that's what we're concerned about in terms of coronary obstruction risk, is that just like, in tavern tower, for example, or in tavern salver, where the surgical valve leaflet may obstruct the left main or the right coronary because it closes the aortic root, becomes a cylinder tube graft, this can still happen with the native aortic in, uh, valve anatomy. So there's no way to predict whether this will go sideways and you might be lucky and get away with it. This may get compressed and scrunched up in the sinuses, but all this will go sideways, particularly in the case of small sinuses. If you're very effaced sinuses, this is even more important because now you have less sinus space here to accommodate all this bulky leaflet. So this is the way to measure the left coronary cusp. Now I'm gonna delete this. Now what if you have a scan that has a leaflet that is curved? Remember leaflets are compliant. So what you can do here in the right click, you go to measurements, you can actually go into a curve distance too. So let me just ex exaggerate this a little bit. So I'm gonna start here and I'm just gonna follow the contour of the leaflet, you don't have to click so many times and you can see now it's leaflet length is now 15.3. So you can do this measurements in cases where you see a very bulky left cut or even right cut, depends on which coronary you're trying to uh, be, con you'd be concerned about for coronary obstruction, usually it's the left main because the left main tends to be lower. Uh, and so that needs to be protected, especially a left dominant system. But this is a very easy and simple way to measure the left cut length or left leaflet length, the sinus height and the left main height in this particular MPR view to determine the coronary obstruction risk. And if I go back to the stretch vessel view, you can put a box of a balloon expandable valve or even self-expanding valve in terms of the waist, 
looking at how much space it'll occupy relative to the leaflet that you're concerned about and to determine whether corner protection may be necessary. Now, once you've done this, you can go back to the double oblique view you can see here and save a picture of this to show the relationship between the left coronary height, left sinus height, and the left cusp length. And actually, I've already saved that here for you. You can see that here. And this is the final report, similar to what I've shown in the previous video. And see the layout with the virtual circle of the 23 millimeter valve. And see the left main and the right coronary septal length. And finally, this picture is showing the risk of coronary obstruction. And of course, the access and the arch anatomy. So I hope you find this helpful. And you can save this PDF and share it with your team members. And of course, you can save this session here in any way format you want. And we'll see you next time.